everybody. Um, welcome to Spring Football 2023. Obviously, it's an exciting day for for everybody around here, um, kicking off a new phase for Marshall's football team. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, Coach will uh, open with a statement, and uh, we'll dive into questions about the spring and start practice today. Coach Hupp. Um, welcome, everybody. Happy to see you guys again back in uh, the flow of things. So appreciate everybody being here. Um, a lot of excitement going on, not only around Marshall football, but Marshall athletics in general. Um, I think, you know, introducing Coach Stevenson today, um, the success of the women's softball team, and Coach Loyne and her staff. Um, obviously, basketball coming off an unbelievable run. Um, there's a lot of positive going on right now um, at Marshall University. So I'm um, excited to be here. Um, another phase for us, opening up spring ball 2023. Um, Coming out of phase one, our winter conditioning program went well. B.A. and his staff did a phenomenal job. Uh, you'll get a chance to see some of the heights and weights and some body changes and a lot of growth. Really take a look at the younger guys that was in that mix. Some of the freshmen we signed last year um, have done a really good job of changing their bodies and more athletic, more explosive. Um, so excited to see them um, actually play football now. Um, going into phase two, um, new season, new team, um, new identity. Um, I, I told one of the reporters in one of, one of the interviews, you know, we'll be a totally different team this year. Um, I think it's going to be a good different, but we'll be different. You know, just what we have pieces-wise coming back, um, the pieces we lost. Um, last year's team did a phenomenal job, and they created their own identity, and they did a lot of successful things. Um, but this is a new team. Um, only the experiences carry over, none of the plays, none of the production. Um, so we got to start from scratch. But I think our foundation is built. I think the expectation of how we prepare um, is laid. Um, I think our leadership um, has gone through the ups and downs. You talk about when we first got here and kind of dealing with COVID and coaching changes and new landscape, transitioning into the new conference. Um, there's a lot of positive um, that we can learn from. Um, but also we got to know that that team last year is gone and we've got to create our own identity. We've got to create our own standards. We've got to create our own um, excitement. Um, each player's got to have the right accountability, the right competitive character, the right competitive nature um, in order to go out and improve this spring. That's the goal. This, the only goal this spring is to create improvement across the board at every position, every phase of the program. We have to improve. Um, and that way we can take steps in the you know, phase three, which will be the summer. So. Um, we're still working to close the gap. Um, I don't think by any means we're there. I think every time you get a chance to start over, that's the beauty about college football. You get a chance to start from scratch. Although some players um, who played um, are back, um, it's a new year for them. So they have new expectations. They have new goals, um, new aspirations. Um, so every year you get to start over. Um, and we got a chance to see in this conference, this conference is an extremely competitive top to bottom. Um, and in order to compete in the fall, we got to be able to improve in the spring. Um, and that's our goal. Um, you'll get a chance to, to look at the press release. We got a lot of new staff members. Um, I think when you have success, um, it gives everyone in the organization the opportunity to create value for themselves. And that's what I want. You know, you look at um, the staff members that have left here over the last couple of years, they've gone on to bigger and better jobs. Um, just like we tell our players, if you do a really good job here, create value for yourself, opportunities will come, whether that is coaches getting opportunities to go to other places, um, players getting an opportunity to play at another level, players getting an opportunity to graduate and go on to successful life. Um, that's, that's the um, goal for me is that every player, every person involved in this organization um, is more successful in life because of them being involved in our organization and the things they learn and how we do things. Um, and I think you see that now. It's a little tedious for the head coach to do a thousand Zoom interviews for every position from the top down, um, but that's part of it. Um, so I think you know you'll get a chance to see the new staff members we brought in um, will elevate the success we've had. Uh, we went out and found the best coaches, administrators, staff members in the country that fit Marshall. Um, and I think again, whenever no different than a player, whenever a player moves forward. Um, you want to replace them with another player. I think the beauty of um, today's world is you get an opportunity um, to use this platform and people want to come here. 
Um, people were excited about coming to Marshall. People were excited about being a part of this program and this community. Um, the head coach's job is the acquisition of personnel on and off the field. Um, so selecting the right people um, to be in this organization is key. Um, once they get here, teaching them how we do things and allowing their experiences um, to add value to our program. And that's what we're working towards this summer. Um, I think you got a chance to see the return of some really great players that played here in the past uh, with Aaron Dobson and Danny Dercourt. Um, I think, again, that just shows guys want to come back. And I think that speaks a lot for Marshall. I think that speaks a lot for this community. It speaks a lot for their experience when they were here, that they want to come back. They want to give back. These guys had an opportunity to go um, do a lot of different things in life, but they wanted to come back and be a part of, of what made them successful um, and help them in their career. So excited to have them back. Um, excited for today. Today will be the first day we find out if we can play football. I know we can lift weights. I know we can run. Um, but playing football will start today. So excited about that. Coach, what, uh, what, what kind of priorities do you take just, just on the basic level at Spring Ball? I know you've got to replace some parts and all that. But in your mind, what do you think here's what we'd like to accomplish? Yeah, I think, again, it's, it's, it's overall improvement. It's not someone going from you know A to Z. It's it's how far can we get them? If we can get them from A to, to C, great. If we can get them from A to X, great. Um, if everyone in the program improves, I think we'll have a chance to be really good. Um, I don't really put goals on. Hey, this guy's got to be able to do X, Y, and Z, or this guy's got to be able to you know master the scheme at this level. I think we're looking for improvement, and then we can build upon that. Um, from a coaching standpoint, is understanding all aspects of the systems, offense, defense, special teams, um, understanding how we do things, how do we practice, how do we get better, how do we watch film, how do we meet, how do we go to class, um, getting a better understanding of that, and then mastering the fundamentals and techniques, right? So we had a lot of younger guys who some played and some were kind of right on the edge of playing, um, understanding the fundamentals and techniques of their position to become better players. So now BA's done a really good job of getting them stronger. Now, how do they take that strength and apply it to football? Um, so that's kind of what we look forward to. There's not really a, hey, if we do this, then we've had a successful spring, or if we don't do this, we didn't. It's overall improvement from day one all the way to day 15. Um, and I think that just lays the foundation for the summer, you know, and hopefully between now um, and, you know, the first game, we've, we've made enough strides and improvement to be competitive, um, and that's the goal. Can you self-evaluate yourself, Ashley, last year? Every day. Every day. My wife does it too, so <laughs> before How you, you even get to it, she's already on it. <laughs> How have you improved from year two to year three? Has it been a, a bigger leap for you as you mature into the position? Yeah, I think, I think you understand. Um, you know, the first year when we lost 13 guys, I took it personal. Like, these guys didn't want to be with me. You know what I mean? It was kind of like, well, bump you. You're getting out of here. You know, forget you. Um, but now you, you, you don't take it personal. You understand that's part of the business. Um, you understand that you always got to be kind of thinking and interviewing and having a plan for whether it's personnel or whether it's a situation, uh, whether it's a resource gap that we're trying to close and how, even though we may not be able to do it now, how do we get there? Um, understanding um, a little bit more of the true expectation. You know, you, you always the expectation is to win. Um, but getting our players to understand, you know, you got to get out in this community. You got to be open. You got to start to develop relationships outside of football. You got to take the helmet off and start to kind of understand um, the people around here want to see, you know, who you really are. Um, and teaching them how to do that, but also still protect themselves, right? They don't want to be so vulnerable that um, people take advantage of it, but teaching them how to do that. Um, understanding that managing 100 and 60, 70 people um, is, is different, um, and every year it's different. You know, every year you deal with different things, positive and negative. Um, I think, again, just kind of understanding that, understanding how to better manage, um, understanding how to, when you're evaluating, you know, someone's progress, you know, just because you don't see them make the leaps and bounds that, you know, you would think off a video game, you know, how are those incremental gains helping that person get better? Um, and then understanding how to motivate 160 people collectively and individually. Um, I think I've got a better understanding of that. I had an opportunity. Uh, we took the staff down to the University of Texas last week and just did some staff development. And, and you realize that the school size doesn't matter. You still have some of the same issues that you're trying to improve or trying to correct on. 
um, that was good for me. I got a chance to sit down with a couple different head coaches, um, you know, this spring or this off season, and kind of just talk about where college football is going now. Um, obviously, there are some football rules that are changing, and how does that manage the game change? There's some recruiting things that are changing. Um, players are changing. You know, obviously now we're in year three, going into year three of NIL. You know, how does that change? We're in the year three of transfer portal. How does that change recruiting? Um, so just a better understanding of how to manage um, and manage um, kind of even kill. You know, you can't be high one day, low the next. You know, hey, this recruit says he loved you, and then you read he went to another school. You know, you got a really good coach, and then they get an opportunity to go somewhere else. How do you stay even killed um, to keep the program moving forward? Probably the biggest thing. Coach, you mentioned, um, you know, you ran through the list of uh, staff changes, but, you know, in particular, um, you know, Jason Seymour, and you, what, what were you looking for in a defensive coordinator? Obviously, that was a strength for you guys last year on the defensive side. And then, you know, talking about, um, you know, the, you know, uh, Derek and, and Aaron and um, having them back, can you dive in, in a little deeper into what that means to have those guys back in the community? Yeah, um, we'll start with the defensive coordinator. Um, obviously, we played really good defense last year. Um, that was something that um, I think kind of got better as the year went on. If you'd asked me at the beginning of the year, I didn't, wouldn't have said we would have been you know, where we were at the end of the year. Um, but what I was looking for, um, whenever you replace a coach, um, you have to be mindful that you're not replacing a coach, if that makes sense. Um, I'm not looking for Jason Seymour to come in here and be Lance Guidry. Um, I was looking for someone that was in the same realm, you know. So Lance Guidry makes pizza, okay. If he's Pizza Hut, okay, I don't want to hire Pizza Hut. But we do have to hire Papa John's, if that makes sense. Two different companies that do the same thing. I think if you try and hire someone to do what Lance did, I don't think that's fair. Um, to whoever you hire. You know, there's a lot of guys, some guys on the staff that, you know, were qualified, you know what I mean? But, again, when you force someone to be someone else, I don't think that's ever fair. You know, Lance Guidry coached his defense from the time he's been coaching, so there's things that he went through 10 years ago that makes him do some things now that he may not do. Well, that person, if you just replace someone, just move someone into that seat, well, that person wasn't there 10 years ago that made him say, well, we're not calling this defense versus this. But from a holistic standpoint, we've recruited to a certain frame of defense. Um, so you wanted someone that was in that same frame or same family, but also had the confidence, also had the experience to come in and understand, okay, hey, this is what we did really, really well last year. Okay, well, did we do it well because it was part of the scheme or did we do it well because we had a good player? Um, and where can I keep some of the things that we did well, but also add some things and some variances to kind of give us the edge now with the players we have? Um, and I think Jason will give us that, that opportunity. You know, he's been coaching in the 4-2-5 frame defense uh, for a long time. Um, he's coached at multiple different levels. Um, the thing that was probably um, intriguing to me when you've coached at Montana, who we've known, who's had success, you know, in the 1AA round for a long time, and you've coached at Valdosta State, you're probably coaching with limited resources but you're still able to have success. Well, he's also coached at Georgia Tech where you probably resource a little more resource. So he's kind of been on both sides. So now I can look at a player that may have the talent, may have the speed, be great, and put him in a position to be successful, but then also look at a player that may not be power five talent-wise, but you still got to get the best out of him. Um, I think, again, when you coach on different levels, you experience different things, you see different type of offenses, you see what teams are trying to do. Um, so that gives him that experience. Um, so he kind of fit what we were looking for. He's, he's strong enough in his own um, pizza making to, to do, you know, his job. But he's also smart enough to kind of know, okay, hey, here are some things that we've done well here that we can merge with some of the things that we've done. Um, so we'll always, I learned that from Coach Saban, we'll always live in the same family offense defense. Um, but we might not always live in the same person, if that makes sense. Um, I think, again, Right now, we have some guys on our staff who played here. Um, the area that I was concerned with, we have some guys on our staff that played here years ago um, who did some really good things. But we didn't have that kind of new age gap, if that kind of makes sense. And the kids sitting in these seats, you know, they know Doug Chapman, they know Ralph Street, they know Shannon Morrison, but the game was different in 99. You know, the game was different in 97. Um, the experiences, college, 
Marshall was different then. Um, some guys that were kind of the new age, you know, I mean, that went through some of the 2000s and some of the newer age football have played in the league and some of the newer age, you know, I tell Doug Chapman all the time, well, you play, they play with a fullback. I mean, there's like three of them in the NFL now. You know, at least Dobson, he played without one. You know what I mean? So there, there's a different variance. Um, I always try to surround these guys with former players because they can tell a story that I can't. Um, yeah, I've played, I've been in the locker room, I've been in the NFL, I've coached, you know, at all different levels, but I've never sat and wore the green. Um, and I think when you can have variants from, you know, the new age or the, you know, closer to the player's age and the past, I think when you blend that, you can get the story told about how special this place is. You're talking about, you know, guys from, you know, the 80s and 90s who played, you know, Bartram, Doug, Ralph, Shannon, those guys who played and how Marshall affected their life then. But then you also have two guys that are in the recent, you know, and how Marshall has affected their life now. And I think for the players to have that kind of information and resources around them, holistically, you answer all the questions. Um, and I think that's what they're going to be able to do. Obviously, they both bring a, a tremendous level of experience whenever you play, um, you know, in the NFL like those guys did or you had a success that Danny did here. Um, you, you've got some experience. Um, Danny tells the guys all the time, everything that you're about to do, I did. So I know what you're great to do. I know what you're great to try and say. Um, you know, Dobson played for arguably the greatest NFL coach in our, in our lifetime, you know. So he knows about how to prepare and doing things the Patriot way and, you know what I mean, coming out every day with a business mindset. So he can instill that in the guys. They know who um, Bilicek is. Some of them don't know who Danny Green is. It's the reality of it. You know, you, you ask these guys, you know, other than Moss and Chapman, who else were on the Vikings, they're like, uh, uh, okay. You know what I mean? But you ask them who was on the Patriots, they, they know. You know what I mean? So just having that experience around I think helps. Coach, uh, when you look at last season and into the 2022 season now, moving into 23, you got your Myrtle Beach Bowl. Uh, shirt on there, and obviously you can't take the wins with you, but uh, what kind of vibe has that given this off season and now as you head into this spring? Yeah, well, I think, you know, um, I think it gives confidence. And, and my job, you know, is to make sure that confidence doesn't turn into cockiness um, and make sure that confidence is still used as a reminder of when we do things our way, what can happen. Um, and, and, you know, part of that is, um, making sure that the younger guys who really didn't play but also got a piece of the success understand that it just doesn't happen. Um, but getting them to understand that the reason we work so hard, the reason we do things the way we do things, is so the byproduct is having success. Um, and I think those experiences from last year can create a little confidence, give you a little bit more understanding of the process. Sometimes, especially in today's world with kids, if there's no result or there's no – hey, if I do this, then this is going to happen, it's hard to get them to keep doing it. And I think last year has given us at least the avenue to understand why we do what we do, why it's important to do the little things, why it's important to work so hard, why the fourth quarter program is important, why academics is so important. Um, and that should give us the confidence to start over and make sure we take every step and not just, well, hey, you know, I'm on the team. We, you know, Last year had a little fun and success. We should just – click our fingers and it happens. So hopefully the experience um, will, will help them understand why we do what we do and why we have to do it that way in order to be successful. Coach, as you go into this spring with uh, your quarterback situation with Cam Back and Henry's I was waiting for the quarterback. Well, you, you, always like to have, you always like to have a quarterback yeah. question. <laughs> uh, but with, with your young guys, too, in the background, I mean, how, how stabilized are you there and wh what are your thoughts on the QB? Yeah, I, you know, the, the beauty of it is um, all of those guys, you know, we've got the, the – the C room, I don't know if anybody ever thought about it, every quarterback's name starts with a C, which is completely I – mean, I we didn't do that by, um, by on purpose. Um, but what it is is, first, these guys have all been here. So system-wise, they've all kind of been through the system. Now they're going to get a chance to actually compete for the job. Um, and and I'm, I don't, I'm not one of these coaches that, you know, oh, well, it's an open competition. The reality of it is Cam is a little bit ahead, right? He's played. He's had some success. Also, the players know the best players are going to play. So Cam's job is to come out and make sure that none of the young guys are able to catch up with him. The young guy's job is the no different than like Cam. Cam pushed Henry all the way into August. 
Cam kept improving. Cam got his opportunity. Um, the young guy's job is to push Cam all the way through spring, all the way through summer, and whenever their opportunity comes, first practice spring, summer, whenever it is, is to take advantage of it. Um, I think they have made strides. I think Cole being on the scout team last year and actually playing against um, the number one defense consistently, although he was running other plays, just the speed of the game over there um, helps. I think Chase actually having an opportunity to be here a semester early as kind of giving him a little bit of a physical leap. Um, Kay, the same thing. You know, he's got an opportunity to go through last year kind of in that rotation of two, three quarterback. Um, so they're all going to get an opportunity. Um, I'm excited to see out of that group who kind of takes the lead. Um, the, the beauty of it is they're all going to get an opportunity. The sad part is they're all going to get an opportunity. So somebody's got to be ready for the opportunity. Now, on top of that, I still think Cam has got a lot of improvement to do. You know, he was in a situation last year where he did some good things, um, but he also did some things that we'd love to have back. Um, so the beauty of the spring is everyone gets a chance to improve without the result. So it's not like, hey, I had a great day and we won the game, so all of a sudden now I'm here. Um, it's no, I, got, I went out today and I improved. Now, my improvement versus this next guy's improvement, although there's a competition, we can't measure together if that makes sense. Cam's probably not going to improve as much as Cole. That's just the reality of it, right? He's probably a little bit farther ahead. But he should improve. Now, no different than Eli Neal, right? Eli Neal is probably not going to improve as much as Jaden Yates. But they both should be improvement. And as long as we get improvement across the board, we'll be good. You know, I, I'm probably the worst. Um, I really don't pay attention until, like, the Final Four. Um, I was on the phone with a recruit the other day, and we were kind of joking about, you know, who was going to win, and this was last week. And he's like, Coach, I think Houston's going to win. I'm like, Houston? Ain't even in it. He was like, no, Coach, they're number one seed. I was like, oh, yeah, 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 well, they got a chance, you know. So I, I, I'm honestly, and that's no disrespect to any any school, I honestly – I usually start watching when it gets to like the final four because we have a little watch party for the guys, but uh, no disrespect to any basketball program. I, I'm literally, um, I, I, I watch final four and the NBA championship. I couldn't name 10 NBA players right now if you told me. Um, Steph Curry and LeBron James is about as far as I can go. Now my son can reel them off. They went to a Hornets game over spring break, and he was reeling them off. Yeah, yeah, I got to see so and so and so and so. I was like, yeah, that's that's awesome. Yep. So. Well, you played at FAU. You played UConn. They got to take care of business. So. See, I didn't even know UConn was in. See that? That's awesome. Um, I did know FAU was in, and I knew San Diego State beat Alabama. Um, wherever I was, it was going by the TV, and they had like four seconds left, and they were winning. So, um, but I do. I I will say this. I do watch the stories. Like Kansas State, their coaching story was good. Texas, their coaching story was really good. Um, obviously, FAU, Miami, I think, won. Is that correct? Their coaching story is really good. Um, so for me, that's what I kind of watch and how different coaches motivate, you know, I won't say the underdog, but, you know, if we all filled out a bracket a month ago, probably we're not down to these, what is it, eight now? We're probably not down to these four, you know what I mean? So um, the coaching stories is motivating to me, and I think it just shows how kids have changed, you know, and how to motivate them and how do you reach them um, can be done different ways. I think that's what this is showing. Uh, Luke Rapp is a little more football question for me. Um, you know, Keith asked about the quarterback room, but when you look at the running back room and the experience you have coming back there, obviously with Hersheen, but guys like A.J. Turner, guys like that fill out the depth for you, and I know that probably – Tugs on your heartstrings as a running backs coach. Yeah, I think it's it's a good opportunity. You know, I think AJ got an opportunity last year to to he's one of the younger guys that you know I kind of speak of where they played a little bit. You know what I mean? But they really had kind of a limited role. But they got a chance to experience a little bit. Him going through a complete fourth quarter, him having an opportunity to truly improve this spring. Um, you know, Isaiah Gordon is probably another guy. You know what I mean? Who was kind of right on the edge. He was in the travel group. He didn't play as much, but he was right on the edge. Um, being able to see him change his body. The one that's probably, um, I won't say a mystery, but, you know, smoke is, is is really impressive because he's had an opportunity. Again, when you go down there on the scout team, 
Well, first of all, you're going against the first defense, and you usually don't have the first offense with you. So you learn how to avoid. They beat you up down there. I mean, they 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 truly help you develop down there. Um, and and he's done a really good job, Maurice Jones. Um, and his ability, his shiftiness, is going to create um, a lane for him. Is he going to be a you know a forty carry guy like LeBourne? I don't know. Um, but he's got some really good you know lateral movement, change of directions that I think can help us. Um, he, he's a little bit lower to the ground, so he's a little tougher to see. Um, now for him, he's been running plays off a card for a year, so now he's got to learn the system. Um, but I think this is a really good opportunity for us as coaches. You know, that first class that we brought in, like some of those guys should be showing up on the depth chart now. Um, that's kind of how you evaluate your recruiting, right? It's one thing to see them in high school and think this guy's going to project, but now some of those guys should be making the transition. I think Tyreek Montgomery is probably a guy who I'm excited to see because he's a guy who was on that cusp. He was kind of like the ninth lineman. Um, he and Jalen Slappy played a little field goal, um, but he's completely changed his body, you know. So now you get a chance to see him go compete. You know, a guy like Dalton Tucker, we don't need to see – you know, do a thousand reps. So this is going to be a great opportunity for those guys to really see, okay, can you handle going against the first defense? Can you handle three and four installs? Can you handle, um, you know, developing not only changing your body, but now, you know, putting it on the field. Um, so we're going to see if, 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 if I was a good recruiter or not with some of these guys we brought in um, who obviously had, you know, great high school careers, and now we've got to transition that to competitive college careers, if that makes sense. It's good. Thank you, guys. Look forward to seeing you guys. Uh, I think next time I see you will be Saturday. Is that correct? Look forward to seeing you guys Saturday, and uh, go hurt. Afternoon, guys. Doing all right? Glad to be back. Uh, excited for the spring. Um, obviously a little different position than last year with the quarterbacks that we got. Um, not five freshmen, still got a lot of freshmen in there, but with a little more experience behind us, uh, in-game experience. So a little different, um, but at the same time, got a lot of work to do, uh, big challenge ahead of us. Uh, still got to develop and continue to see these guys grow. Um, excited to see the offense grow as a whole, um, make some tweaks, changes, so on and so forth, but improvements from last year is really what we're looking forward to. Um, so open it up to questions. Coach, I, I hit you with this question last year, and, you know, it, it, last year at this time you were just starting into your first season as OC. How have you seen yourself improve and, and been able to, um, to really sink into what you're comfortable with in an offensive scheme? Right. That's a great question. Uh, comfortability, we really got it there near the end. Um, obviously, we all know what happened last year. There's a lot of, a lot of different things, a lot of, you know, quarterback changes, coaches changes, all that type of stuff. Um, so once we got a little settled there at the end, I think you could you could tell it. Um, fought through, you know, like everything at the end of the year in bowl games, some injuries, some nicks and bruises. Um, we were able to get nine wins last year, you know, six and one with a freshman quarterback, and that kid coming back, very, uh, very, very pleased and excited to see what he can do. Just to build off that a little bit, uh, now that you've got a year under your belt and you've got more returners, you know, what do you see? What's the character of this offense going to be if if everything works out for you? Uh, I think you saw it a little bit the last three games there. Uh, you know, we got some comfortability with Cam and the offense, and then obviously it helps having a 22. Uh, the guy did lead the country in points the year before at 11 and a half. So um, having him back definitely helped, even if he wasn't 100%, just having the body there um, certainly helps. Kalen did a phenomenal job filling in for him, and uh, Payne and AJ and so on and so forth. This is going to be a huge spring for them, the young backs. Um, again, huge spring for the quarterbacks. We've still got to get better developed, whether it's Cam, so on and so forth, down the line. Um, there's going to be a lot of competition all across the board in that room, in other rooms. Uh, that, that's what spring is for, open competition, development. Um, what is the offense going to look like? It's going to look, like I said, a little similar to what you saw in the last three games, um, in the last four, including the bowl. Um, so it, it's a little bit of that, hopefully a little better too. Clint, with uh, Cam having that year and, and obviously kind of growing as a dual threat kind of guy, uh, are you going to – not that you would, had tied him up at all, but will he be able to kind of do more things because of he's got a year under his belt? Yeah, no, there's definitely things you don't do with a freshman quarterback. You don't just, you know, give him everything all at once. You do kind of – and if you notice, you know, we, we played him in every game 
strategically for a reason. Um, we saw the improvements he made last spring and summer. Um, and even if we were comfortable with the other quarterback, that we were still needed to get him ready because of how the improvements that he made. Um, not in games. And then you put him in games, and I, I believe I heard it all across the town, you know, people saw him get better each week. And that's usually you don't see, usually it's each year you see a kid get better. So to see a kid improve week by week like that, um, and, and it's only we're scratching the surface at what he can do. Um, I think I heard Coach Huff say it, but he's in the exact same shoes at, at this point last year that all the other ones are in. You know what I mean? They, they haven't had a lot of game experience. But he didn't last year at this point. you got to get them ready for that because they're one play away from it also as well. Um, and that's the harsh reality of playing quarterback. Um, one year you're not even traveling and, you know, you're not, you, you know, back up. And the next year you're back up one play away from playing. So um, I think they realize that. Um, I stressed it to them this, this winter of how real it is for playing now. And they're like, oh, crap, yeah, I'm not redshirting anymore. I am, I, I'm, I am close to being playing. So the intensity and everything does step up. When you look at the, um, you know, the offensive line, um, you know, obviously that, that that was a group that went through a lot of change last year, and and you lose a couple guys on that front. But uh, how about the depth? Because you know, last year in the portal, that went kind of offensive line heavy and, yes, and got a few guys in. How that, um, how, how's that development going? Yeah, great question. Um, love those guys. I think I heard I came in at the end of coach talking about Tariq and Slappy and Fraley and a lot of these young guys that we recruited and signed out of high school, let alone the transfers. Yes, we're excited about the transfers, you know, the Lloyd Willis's, the CK's, the junior colleges and so on and so forth. But the high school kids that we recruited, really excited because you did, you can't, especially a lineman, it's hard to come in from high school and, and or that's a big, you're banging around with, with, you know, fourth year, fifth year seniors. So you got a year in the weight room with BA, you got their bodies right. Like you said, like Tariq, and Jalen, they've completely changed in just one year. Um, I don't even think they were early enrollees like you know, like Chase Harrison and some of the quarterbacks we've had. So I, I'm I'm really excited to see what they can do. This is their first spring. That's like Cole Pinnock. This is his first spring. You know, a lot of these guys got that last year. And spring is you're getting a lot of reps in there because spring is developmental time. You know, uh, fall is execution time. You know what I mean? We can still develop and stuff, but we got to execute. You know, spring we're going to fully develop. So this is going to be a great time for all anyone going through their first spring. Huge development emphasis, as always. So, but uh, O line, I'll, I'll continue to talk about them because they deserve it. Uh, really excited about the the returning guys that we have up front, um, from Driscoll to Holler to Osborne to Dalton Tucker. You know, obviously we're losing Cedrice Plant in there. He did a phenomenal job for us. We're losing Sartor at the right side. We feel like we've replaced that either with some portal or some young guys, um, creating competition in there. I think at this point last year we were probably comfortable with seven. And now we probably have eight to nine that you're comfortable with already at this point. So, um, you know, so hopefully that stays true and we can get through spring with that same number. And uh, if we're rolling into fall with nine to ten guys, we can rotate in there up front. Uh, it, it'll be a different story than what we saw last fall. We good? Awesome. Thank you all very much. Go ahead. Hi, guys. I'm Jason Seymour. I'm the new defensive coordinator. Excited to be here. Uh, usually when – you're taking the jobs in this profession. It's because you're trying to fix something or you're trying to establish a culture and do things better because, you know, guys are moving on because they got fired or whatever. But I've been fortunate to step into some pretty good situations, and that's my situation here. Um, we got a, a group of guys that knows how to play really good football. We have uh, excellent culture from this football team. The guys know how to work really hard. Uh, so my job is to, to not screw it up. So uh, going into the spring, we have good leadership at all three levels of the defense with, uh, with Eli Neal, Owen Porter, Mike Abraham, guys like that. Uh, there won't be, uh, I'm sure you guys have questions about a scheme and how the defense will change and all those kind of things. Base structure, the defense will be similar. That's why I got this job during the interview process. Uh, I've run a similar system before. It wouldn't make sense to make much changes there because the guys in the system are playing at an elite level and they know what they're doing. So uh, really what spring's about for us is to define 
find some uh, dependability, consistency with the guys that uh, we need to plug in uh, to play football at a, at a high level like we did last year on the defensive side of the ball. What questions you guys got? Just building off of that, you know, scheme aside, mm -hmm. what will this defense look like? Yeah, how will you put your signature on this defense so we know when we see it out there, that, you know, that reflects you? Um, I would love uh, for our brand of defense to look like it did last year. I, w I would be very proud of stamping something like that. So, so really it, right now it's about uh, – it's about moving forward and carrying on the tradition of elite defensive play. Ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, I want uh, all the dudes that are on the field to, to be dependable, to be consistent, play for each other. Um, a group of guys that are out there. Um, how do you see that in college football? You see that through effort. That's, that's how you see it. Um, guy, guys' uh, effort to the football, guys – Guys, uh, consistency and dependability, those are all things that speak to, to the young men that are out on the field. At the end of the day, that's my job. My job's player development, right? So, uh, and the culture of the defense, right? So we want that to show with, uh, with how we play. So at the, at the end of the day, uh, I think it's about earning trust, you know, um, trust with the guys and me and the guys with each other. Uh, that's how you play uh, defense at a high level nowadays, okay, because the challenge nowadays is, you know, it's hard to play defense because of the multiplicity and offensive scheme. So you have, to, uh, you have to be able to play normal down defensive package that, that allows you to address all your needs. So that's, that's a lot of football. Um, for us, it's all about the preparation. It's a preparation game, right? So, so guys uh, preparing at a level, um, that allows them to build trust with each other in, in, in communication and execution and all those kind of things. Um, so at the end of the day, that's, what you, that's the product that you want to put on the field, high effort to the football and guys communicating at a high level because they have lots of trust in each other. Coach, you mentioned uh, having Oa and Micah and uh, Eli back. Uh, obviously, those guys have a lot of experience. How much do, will you kind of lean on them, too, to, to help you along as you start your, your job here as D coordinator? Absolutely. Well, at, at the end of the day, it's their defense. I, I don't get to step between the white lines. Um, they'll have a lot of ownership in terms of how far we go as a unit. Um, I go out of my way to empower them to understand that. I go out of my way to – empower them and give them a voice with the other guys on the team. Um, us as coaches, we always have a lot of X's and O's coaching points, right? Uh, the X's and O's only take you so far. Um, a lot of the times the scheme and the execution piece, uh, it's not always perfect, but on our side of the ball in defense, you can overcome those things with how hard you play. Um, so, so I'm going to lean on those guys heavily. To, to be a voice for that, to continue to uphold the standards and, and the tradition that we have on the defensive side of the ball. Um, really, really it's, it's, it's my job to, to manage those things. It has to come from them. It has to be important to them. I know it is. Um, they've demonstrated that. Uh, now it's, it's up to the guys that are new in the program to buy into those things, right? So it goes beyond uh, scheme and X's and O's and recruiting. It's, it's about the individual dynamic with all the players on the team, right? So between uh, me and Coach Huff, we're ultimately responsible for that. I'm responsible for that on the defensive side of the ball. He's responsible for that globally as a football team. Uh, every year is a, is a new year, a new team, uh, a new set of guys, a new set of voices, a new set of leadership. So that's part of the developmental process in spring is, is building the consistency and the trust and giving guys the voice to, to – say what's important to them and what they want their identity, what they want their team to look like. I have a plan for what I want the defense to look like, but it doesn't matter if, if, if the players don't buy in and the players don't believe. So they're going to be part of that process. Um, I get the question, uh, what, does, uh, what, does a, what does your defense look like? What does the brand look like, right? Um, that, th that, question, that question leans a lot on them as well. What, what's your guys' expectation? What's your guys' ownership? So the conversation that uh, the conversations that we've had is uh, it's tough to duplicate what they did last year statistically. You know, it's tough to du duplicate, especially in today's college football. Um, in order to, to to play at to play at that level, right? Um, the guys understand that it takes a lot. It does. It takes a lot. 
It takes a lot of preparation. It takes a lot of trust. Um, it takes playing at a high level and producing on game days. Um, very easy to say, very hard to do, and, and the guys understand that. So as far as the, the cultural piece of, of what we do on our side of the ball, those guys have a huge say-so. When you look at the different stops along your coaching journey, um, you know, whether it's, you know, Valdosta State or Montana or Georgia Tech, how, how have those prepared you to, to lead this defense at the D1 level? Um, experience always helps. So, so when, you've, when you've been in the situation uh, multiple times, you kind of learn. You learn as you walk through the door what's important and what's not important, you know. Um, o over the years, um, I've learned as a coach that it's more about the players than it is than it is you. Um, when I when I was a young coach, I thought it was about you know my scheme and how smart I am and and uh, what I bring to the table and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But really, it's about the guys that are that are sitting in the room, um, what they're comfortable with, um, those kind of things. Uh, when I interviewed during this process, I feel like uh, me and Coach Huff hit it off immediately because of the way I see the game and because of the way I see player development, you know. Um, as you go from, from stop to stop, um, you realize that you realize that every every team is different in their own right. Every area of the country is different. Um, this place uh, reminds me a lot of Montana because of the importance of football, because of the, the, the community that's behind it. Um, the blue collar mentality that the kids have, the expectation to win is high here. Um, and, and I really enjoy being in those environments, you know, I, I, I really do. Um, same thing down at Valdosta State, um, they're used to winning. Um, the, the community identifies itself through the football team, which is different. It's a lot different than it is at a place like Georgia Tech where you have 20,000 pro sports teams and there's a billion things to do on the weekend. And if you're winning nine games, they're going to show up. And you know what I mean? That I mean, people in this community are going to be here. And, and they have high expectations. And, and they're going to give you what you need to succeed. So we're excited about the opportunity. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, it's great to meet you. Coach, another year. Um, yeah, how exciting is this start, um, you know, as you get ready to dive into spring ball and build off of what you guys um, have, have established the past couple of years? Um, really exciting because I think the most, um, the, the biggest thing I've realized so far is they signed a huge freshman class two years ago right before I got here. And you're starting to see those guys, a lot of those guys redshirted last year or played some on special teams for me. Um, starting to see those guys mature and grow up, and there's a huge group of those young guys. It's it's really fun to coach them because they're a year older. Um, it's obviously exciting to be doing football again, um, but that's that's the coolest part so far. Is just the you know twenty some freshmen he signed two years ago are now up and rolling a year older. So that's a lot of fun. Looking forward to working with them in spring. Is it like being a kid in the candy store with all the, with all these recruits finally? progressing, you know, you're probably wanting to grab some guys away from different units to make them fit your unit more. Yeah. Um, some of those guys, we had like, we had a set depth chart for about five or six games. And then obviously attrition, injury, and all that kind of stuff shows up. So you get to train some younger guys. And there's some guys that we got to train with the red shirt rule that are still, you know, kept their red shirt and they're all back, you know. So it's fun to look at a group of guys. You graduated a some, a some core special teams guys for at least my area that I'm coaching, but there's a lot of young guys that played like one or two or three games or maybe just the bowl game that have done all the drills and are getting better at that stuff. So that's, that's really exciting because there's some stuff you're not having to cover with them on, on base one. You're moving on to you know, second you're, and you're you know, training them for the next phase. So that's a lot of fun. Um, you, when you look at place kicking last year and the the youth of that room um, that uh, you mentioned now they're a year older how, how do you take some of those experiences good and bad and, and build off of that to to further develop that young room yeah that's um, that's another fun part because uh, McConnell's back um, as the punter and he had a lot of reps and you can't 
uh, simulate the reps he had on Saturdays in practice. You can try, but he's a year older, and he, he'll be better. Um, you know, and then Reese as a true freshman. John was a redshirt freshman, so he had already been used to, like, practice and the way we practice and all that kind of stuff the year before I got here. Huff was here, so he got accustomed to that. But Reese was a true freshman, got here in, in the middle of the summer um, as our place kicker and kickoff. And so um, – it's exciting to watch them. I just told them, you're, I mean, they basically had the last two and a half, three months off since the bowl game. So they didn't, they didn't get to, um, they, they have not been kicking or punting. So they've been taking full advantage of the off season workout. And that's, it was exciting to, it, I'm, I'm excited to watch them hopefully with fresh legs and conditioned and, and well-trained legs in the, in the weight room, you know, hit the ball better and all that kind of stuff. So I'm excited for them to have a good year too, second year, you know. Oh my God, huge. I mean, Reese basically came in um, in the middle of the summer, and so he had never been through a fourth quarter program. We just went through that for four straight weeks where he's running just like any other linebacker, DB, or safety would, and, you know, and not kicking. So he's getting all of that work, all that volume of reps on his legs, and now he's applying it to kicking and punting and, and kicking off, and it makes a huge difference. And he's gotten a lot better. It makes a difference for everybody, even the other guys that had been here for a year and done it again for the second time. Um, it makes a huge difference. So that, that probably for, the, for them is one of the most beneficial things you can, you can do during the year is tell them, hey, you're done kicking or punting for the next two months. And it's just running and lifting. You know? So that's been a lot of fun to watch them you know, compete in it, too. Because you know? that's kind of where they earn respect from their teammates, because they're in, there in the mix with everybody else. You know? You, you realize what they um, – some of the things you thought you covered you know, as freshmen, hey, you're going to have all these fans, you're going to have all these people watching you, and you forget about the things that, that they might not be used to doing, like how to warm up, you know, and all of a sudden they change their warm-up routine in front of 100,000 people when they would have, you know, done something different in front, you know, in front of 50. So it's – all those little things get taught um, in real time when you do them during the year, and that was so – important for for all of them even last year um the, you know our backups got a chance to play we had injuries and had a second string snapper play in a game and we won a game uh, against odu on field goals and our backup snapper snapped the whole game boss it um nobody pays attention to who's in snapping the football but he got a chance to snap in that game we won the game 12-0 on field goals um sean miser got a chance to play some like anytime you can get out there and actually do it in front of people it's it's huge and then you you know because those guys, they're just, you can't simulate that in practice. And now they're used to it. They know what it's like to kick, punt, snap in front of fans. And uh, now they're a year better from it. So, um, no, it's a huge, it's a huge advantage having them, uh, have, having that under their belt for a year. That's it? Awesome. Easy. Thank you, guys.